Igboland Standard Igbo, Alabo, also known as Southeastern Nigeria, is the homeland of the Igbo people. It is a non-governmental cultural and common linguistic region in southern Nigeria. Geographically, it is divided by the lower Niger River into two unequal sections, an eastern which is the larger of the two and a western section. It is characterized by the diverse Igbo culture and the equally diverse Igbo language. Politically, Igboland is divided into several southern Nigerian states. Culturally, it is divided into several subgroupings, including the Anioma, Ngwa, Abariba, Eta Egbibu, Ezaa, Ibeku, Ohuhu, Omuma, and the Epei. William Balfour Bakey remarked that in Igbo land each person hails, as a sailor would say, from the particular district where he was born, but when away from home all are Igbos. And yet considerable differences exist between different parts of this extensive country, and the dialects spoken also vary greatly. <laughs> Topic. Territorial boundaries Igboland is surrounded on all sides by a host of large rivers, and other southern and central Nigeria indigenous tribes namely Bani, Yerhobo Isoko, Ija, Agoni, Igala, Tiv, Yako, Idoma and Ibibio. In the words of William B. Bakey, Igbo homeland, extends east and west, from the old Kalabar River to the banks of the Kora, Niger River, and possesses also some territory at Aboh, an Igbo clan, to the west ward of the latter stream. On the north it borders on Igara, Igala and Apoto, and it is separated from the sea only by petty tribes, all of which trace their origin to this great race. It is primarily situated in the lowland forest region of Nigeria, with parts in the Niger Delta, where the Niger River fans out into the Atlantic Ocean in a vast network of creeks and mangrove swamps on the Bight of Bani. The earliest found settlements in Igboland date back to 4500 BC in the central area, from where the majority of the Igbo-speaking population is believed to have migrated. The northern Igbo kingdom of Nri, which rose around the 10th century AD, is credited with the foundation of much of Igboland's culture, customs, and religious practices. It is the oldest existing monarchy in present-day Nigeria. In southern Igboland several groups developed, of which the most notable was the Aero Confederacy. Igboland was part of the Southern Nigeria Protectorate of the British Empire and was amalgamated into modern day Nigeria in 1914. The nation gained independence in 1960. Shortly afterwards, Igboland was involved in its biggest war during Biafra's movement for secession, which eventually ended in 1970 when this area rejoined Nigeria. Topic. Ancient trade routes Igboland's culture has been shaped primarily by its rainforest climate, its ancient trade, migration, and social history within its various clans and peoples, and with its ancient trading neighbors, allies and lately with Europeans. Mr. W. B. Bakey said, I seized the moment, and, by our interpreter, told Chukuma, that we had come to make his acquaintance and his friendship, and to ascertain if the people were willing to trade with us. Whilst signing a trade agreement with Igbo chief, Mr. Chukuma Chukuma Obi from ABOH clan, who were one of the leading Igbo clans, engaged in early active trading with Europe. Similarly, after our salutations, I spoke of friendship, of trade, and of education, and particularly enlarged upon the evils of war, and the benefits of peace, all of which was well received remarked William B. Balki when signing a trade agreement with Igbo chief, Ezebogo in Asaba on August 30, 1885, due to the native common linguistic standard and interrelated cultures in Igboland, pre-dating the arrival of Europeans, the Lower Niger River, which divides Igboland into unequal eastern and western parts, has from ancient times continued to provide easy means of communication, trading and unity amongst Igbos on both sides of the Niger River, as well as promoted ancient trade and migration of people into Igboland, and between Igboland and rest of the world. Some of the notable ancient trade and export routes in Igboland included the famous Lower Niger and Njaba Oguta Lake Orashi navigational routes via Asaba Anitsha Aboh, and Awo Omama Oguta Ogba Egbema N Dani Aboh ferry services respectively. <laughs> 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 
Topic History Topic Stone Age There is evidence of late Stone Age late Paleolithic human presence from at least 10,000 years ago. Early settlement of Igboland dates back to 6000 BC based on early pottery found in the Okigwe, Oka Igwi, and known today as Aka. Much of the pottery excavated by a team led by Thurston Shaw with the University of Nigeria at Nsukka in 1978 uncovered a rock quarry which was a mine for tool and pottery making for a stone civilization nearby at Ibagwa. Anthropologists at the University of Benin discovered fossils and use of monoliths dating back to 4500 BC at Ugwel Uturu in the Okigwe area. Further evidence of ancient settlements were uncovered at a hypothesized Nsukka metal cultural area from 3000 BC and later settlements attributed to NGWA culture at AD 8-18. It is unclear what cultural links there are between these prehistoric artifacts and today. Later human settlement in the region may have links with other discoveries made in the wider area particularly with the culture associated with the terracotta discoveries at Nok spanning a wide area about north-central Nigeria. Some local villagers retain the original name, like Umuzwoka, the blacksmiths Etzioka, Okigwe, Imoka, etc. The Nsukka Okigwe axis forms as a basis for a proposed proto-Igbo cultural heartland antecedent to contemporary Igbo culture. Much of the Igbo population is believed to have expanded from a smaller area within in this region, diverging into several independent Igbo-speaking tribes, village groups, kingdoms and states. The movements were generally broken into two trends in migration, a more northerly spread group towards the banks of the Niger and the upper quadrant of the Cross River, the other, following a southerly trail had mostly risen from the ISU populations based nearer the axis from which the majority of southern Igbo communities were populated. Mbays are notably the best examples of an Igbo group claiming autochthony and rejecting many migratory histories about their origins. Many of these groups, either way, are evidently culturally northern or southern Igbo based on the proximity of their traditions to those of their neighbors and, many times, familial and political ties. Topic: <laughs> Igbo UKWU finds AD 300 to 900. The first Igbo UKWU metal and precious artifacts finds were made accidentally in 1939, when one Isaiah Anozi was digging a cistern. This led to the discovery of a larger network of linked metal works from the 9th century. The works were based in Igbo UKWU and further finds were found by archaeology teams led by Thurston Shaw in 1959-60 and in 1964 in the compound of Jonah Anozi. Initially, throughout the 1960s and 1970s it was thought that the Igbo UKWU bronze and copper items were of an external origin or were influenced by outside technology due to their technical sophistication. The opposite was revealed to be true since local copper deposits had been exploited by the 9th century and anthropological evidence, such as the Ichi-like scarifications on the human figures, show local origin. The works have been attributed to an isolated bronze industry which had developed without outside influence over time to reach such sophistication. Igbo trade routes of the early second millennium reached the cities of Mecca, Medina and Jeddah through a network of trade routes journeyed by middlemen. There was evidence of beads that originated in India in the 9th century Igbo UKWU burial sites. Thousands of glass beads were uncovered from the ruined remains of a nobleman's garments. The burial site was associated with the NRI kingdom which began around the same century according to indigenous history. Topic: <laughs> Kingdom of NRI 900 C 1560 The northern Igbo kingdom of NRI, rising around the 10th century based on Umunri traditions, is credited with the foundation of much of Igboland's culture, customs, and religious practices. It is the oldest existing monarchy in present-day Nigeria. It was around the mid-10th century that the divine figure Eri is said to have migrated, according to Umunri lore, to the Anambra Igbo, Omambara river basin, 
specifically at its meeting with Ezu River known as Ezu na Omambara in present-day Aguleri. The exact origins of Ari are unknown and much of NRI traditions present him as a divine leader and civilizer sent from heaven to begin civilization. In contrast, Ari's origins generally suggest a northeasterly origin which has sparked up debate pertaining to a possible Igala origin for Ari. Due to historic trade and migration of old, other people also entered the Igboland in about the 14th or 15th centuries and mixed with the natives. Towards the western end of Igboland, across the Niger River, rose a man known as Ease Chima who fled Benin with his accomplices after a dispute with the Oba of Benin who consequently exiled him in the 1560s. As they left Benin City heading eastwards, Ease Chima and his followers settled in a number of lands and established monarchies with the natives in those areas. Those grew into major village groups and towns after the 16th century. Collectively, these places are known as Umuachima which translates as the children or descendants of King Chima. Topic: <inaudible> Igala Wars and European Contact 1450 to 1750. Igboland was historically known as the Ibo E, Ibo E, and Hebo country by early European explorers. Igboland was conquered by the British Empire after several decades of resistance on all fronts. Some of the most famous of the resistance include the Ekumeku movement, the Anglo Arrow War, and the Aba women's riots, which was contributed to by women of different ethnic backgrounds in eastern Nigeria. The extreme northern parts of Igboland in the 18th were subject to much raiding by elements of the Igala people of Ida under Anoja Oboni, a descendant of one of the Ida royal families. The conflicts drew down further into areas in central northern Igboland, particularly Nsugbe near where early European settlers with Joseph Hawkins noted events from parts of the conflicts between the Igbo country and Gala in A History of a Voyage to the Coast of Africa published in 1797. Umuiri traditions state that Anoja Oboni, however, is of royal Airy stock and founded Ida as he trailed northwards. The Igala do not claim origins from Anoja Oboni or the Igbo. Topic: <inaudible> Erechukwu and the slave trade, 1750 to 1850. A number of polities rose either directly or indirectly as a result of NRI. The most powerful kingdom of these was the Aero Confederacy, which rose in the Cross River region in the 17th century and declined after British colonization in the early 20th century. The Aero state centered on Arachukwu followed NRI's steady decline, basing much of its economic activities on the rising trade in slaves to Europeans by coastal African middlemen. The present site of Arachukwu was originally settled by the Ibibio people under the Obong Okonida kingdom before the conquest of what became Obinkita in the 17th century by two main Igbo groups, the Izagwu clan and the Oke Nashi assisted by the Ibom Isi or AKPA mercenaries under the leadership of the Nubi dynasty. Led by Agwu Anobia, a descendant of Nna Uru from Abariba, the Izagwu clan was centered at their capital Amanagwu and were resisted by Obong Okonida which led to the start of the Aero Ibibio Wars. The war initially became a stalemate. Both sides arranged a marriage between the king of Obong Okonida and a woman from Amanagwu. The marriage eventually failed to bring peace but played a decisive role in the war. Oke Nashi was led by Nashi Ipia who was a Dibia or priest among the Eta people and was called by Agwu Anobia to help in the war against the Ibibio. These groups were followed by a third non-Igbo Ekoi cultured group, AKPA or Ibom Oberutu who were led by Akuma Naba, the first Ease Aero, the title of the King of the Aero. In southern Igboland several groups developed mostly independent of NRI influence. Most of these groups followed a migration out of ISU communities in present-day Emo state, although some communities, such as the Mbase cluster of village groups, claim to be autochthonous. Topic: <laughs> Colonial Era 1850 to 1960. 
Following the British Parliament's abolition of the slave trade in 1830, the British Royal Navy had opened up trade with coastal towns Bani and Opobo and further inland on the Niger with Asaba in the 1870s. The palm oil industry, the biggest export, grew large and important to the British who traded here. British arrival and trade led to increased encounters between the Igbo and other polities and ethnic groups around the Niger River and led to a deepening sense of a distinct Igbo ethnic identity. Missionaries had started arriving in the 1850s. The Igbo, at first wary of the religion, started to embrace Christianity and Western education as traditional society broke down. Christianity had played a great part in the introduction of European ideology into Igbo society and culture often time through erasure of cultural practice, adherence to the denominations were often barred in partaking in ancient rites and traditions, and joining fraternities and secret societies were forbidden as the church grew stronger, due to the incompatibility of the Igbo decentralized style of government and the centralized system required for British indirect rule, British colonial rule was marked with open conflicts and much tension. Under British colonial rule, the diversity within each of Nigeria's major ethnic groups slowly decreased and distinctions between the Igbo and other large ethnic groups, such as the Hausa and the Yoruba, became sharper. British rule brought about changes in culture such as the introduction of warrant chiefs as ease traditional rulers where there were no such monarchies. Topic. Nigerian independence and civil war 1960s. Following the independence of Nigeria from the United Kingdom in 1960, most of Igboland was included in its eastern region. Following a coup in 1966 which saw mostly Igbo soldiers assassinating politicians from the western and northern regions of Nigeria, Johnson Aguiyi Ironsai seized control of Lagos, the capital, and came into power as military head of state of Nigeria. In revolt and retaliation against the government General Aguiyi Ironsai was ambushed and assassinated by northern members of the military on 29 July 1966 in a revolt against that had strong ethnic overtones. Ironsai's assassination stood out more because of the method of his killers. Ironsai had his legs tied to the back of a Land Rover and was driven around town while still attached. The eastern region formed the core of the secessionist Republic of Biafra. A regional council of the peoples of eastern Nigeria decided the region should secede as the Republic of Biafra on May 30, 1967. Nigerian General Emeka Odamegwu Ojukwu on this day made a declaration of independence of Biafra from Nigeria and became the head of state of the new republic. The Nigerian Civil War or the Nigerian Biafran War lasted from 6 July 1967 until 15 January 1970, after which Biafra once again became part of Nigeria. The Republic of Biafra was defeated after three years of war by the federal government of Nigeria from 1967 to 1970 with military support from the United Kingdom Strategy and Ammunition, Soviet Union Ammunition, the United Arab Republic Air Force, as well as with support from other states around the world. The effects of Nigerian war strategies such as starvation on Biafran civilians most of whom were ethnic Igbo remains a controversial topic. The movement for the sovereignty of Biafra has continued with a minority, most making up the MASSOB organization. Geography and biodiversity Historically, Igboland has taken up a large part of southeastern Nigeria, mostly on the eastern side of the Niger River. The Igbos claim their territory extends westward across the Niger to the regions of Aniasha, Indakwa, Ukuani, and Ika in present-day Delta State. Its eastern side is terminated by the Cross River, although micro-communities exist over on the other side of the river, its northernmost point enters the savanna climate around Nsukka. In Nigeria today, Igboland is roughly made up of Abia, Anambra, Ebonyi, Anugu, Imo, Northern Delta and Rivers states, and small parts of Aqua Ibom. More than 30 million people inhabit Igboland and with a population density ranging from 140 to 390 inhabitants per square kilometre 350 to 1,000 per square miles it could be the most densely populated area in Africa after the Nile Valley. 
Altogether Igboland has an area of some 40,900 to 41,400 square kilometers, 15,800 to 16,000 square miles, 